Well, hello everyone and happy new year. I am Matt Williamson at Williamson NFL on Twitter X, whatever. Drop me a line there whenever. Let's put a bow on Steelers Seahawks. Again, very, very good win. Um, I just have all sorts of random notes for today. I'm going to start with uh, what NFL.com put out as their next gen stat of the game. Steelers Mason Rudolph targeted outbreaking routes on 37.5% of his attempts in week 17, completing all nine for 149 yards and generating a 34% completion percentage over expectation. It means he was accurate. The highest mark by any Steelers quarterback this season. So we've talked a lot about throwing over the middle, and I don't see that as an issue with Rudolph, but throwing outbreaking routes isn't easy either. You know, I mean, usually they're far throws outside the number width wise. So I just found that encouraging. I mean, I think some people worry about his arm strength and I don't, it's not great, but he does drive the ball on outbreaking routes. Well, so I'm sure you're all aware. Mike Tomlin has 17 straight seasons now without a losing season. Most, but it's the most ever by for a start of a head coaching career. And I know people downplay it. Well, where are the Super Bowls? Where are the playoff wins lately? That rem- a bit um, that line of consistency is ridiculous, folks. But with that win in Seattle, he moved past George Hallis into third all-time list, not just to start a career, behind Belichick had 19 years in a row where he didn't have a losing season, and Landry, Tom Landry had 20 years in a row between 1965 and 1985. I mean, they're two of the best coaches of all time, and he just passed George Hallis. I mean, so I think credit is due there, to say the least. Seattle, they had nine possessions in this game, went three and out on three of those, and turned the ball over on the first play of another possession. I mean, no wonder they didn't run so many plays. You know, the defense was very stout. And the Steelers, maybe more importantly, didn't have a three and out offensively the entire game. So when I we talk about the stats and stuff and I do my stat pack, one thing they always have is how often do you turn a set of downs into a new set of downs? And frankly, the Steelers have been at the bottom of the league all year. The fact that you bumped that up so dramatically in this game and didn't have any three and outs just has a huge, huge ripple effect on the whole team, the defense, et cetera, et cetera. So, in the two games Rudolph has now started, Pickens has receptions of 86 yards, 66 yards, 44 yards, 37, and 33 yards. I mean, that's two games. He has five catches of 33 yards or more. He's caught 11 passes for an average of 29.6 yards per reception in two games. (laughs) Pretty crazy. I mean... Keep it rolling. Devin Bush, you're familiar with his work, I'm sure. Finished with a game high and career high 17 tackles, subbing in for Jordan Brooks. But it might have been about the least impactful seven tackle per, 17 tackle performance you'll ever see. He was not a difference maker. They targeted him. They wanted him near the ball. They wanted to go his direction. Tackles is like the most misleading stat in the whole league, to be very honest with you. Plus, they're very subjective depending what building you're in. But the fact that he has, like if corners have a lot of tackles, usually because you're throwing at The only people that don't get time off this year are pro athletes. Eh, me as well. And, of course, the folks at Bet Online. With NFL bowl season and NBA in full swing over the holidays, Bet Online isn't taking a second off to make sure you have all the up-to-the-second odds, news, and information there on top of it. Bet Online has all the sports wagering info you need with both desktop and mobile access. Head there today to get into the action. Remember to use our promo code BLEAV. That's all caps, BLEAV to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit.
All right. So we talked a little bit about Porter on Metcalf. I've seen a couple different stats on that. So I just wanted to throw them out there. He was aligned on DK Metcalf of 26 out of Metcalf's 32 routes ran in this game. Metcalf ended up with three catches for six targets, though he did go for 86 yards on those receptions. That was from NFL Next Gen. But according to Pro Football Focus, Porter led up two catches for 54 yards and Metcalf averaged... Pro Football Focus said Porter only led up two catches for 54 yards. Some of these coverage stats worry me. I mean, the bottom line is Porter's having really difficult assignments. I thought he had a tough go of it in this game. But is it zone? Is it man? Is it his guy? Is it your guy? Some of that stuff gets a little foggy. So be a little careful with coverage stats. I think they're still a work in progress. Um, but they did mention Witherspoon, the corner on the other side. I thought he played great. He allowed just one catch for 13 yards. And what we do know is Metcalf ended up with 3.03 yards per route run in this game. So that's a very high number. I mean, Metcalf had a big game. Every time he runs a route, he's producing over three yards. I mean, that's not even when the ball goes to him. That's a very, very good day. So another stat I kind of like, kind of don't is pass rush win rate. But I do think this passes the sniff test that Keanu Benton, Larry Ogunjobi, and Montrevis Adams all had at least a 25% pass rush win rate. So when you rush the passer, they beat the guy ahead of them at least a quarter of the time. And I saw that on tape too. Steelers put up a season-high 468 yards last week in Seattle in a game in which they didn't have a three and out offensively, as we mentioned. Only five different skill position players, just two receivers, touched the ball in that game. Found that interesting. I mean, the only guys that touched, the only skill guys that touched the ball in that game were Deontay Pickens, the two backs, and Fryermuth. Rudolph had a run, you know, but they consolidated. I mean, they weren't, we're going to have to get Darnell Washington a touch. We don't have to get Austin a touch. You know, they just gave it to their dudes. Talking about yards for a route run, I mentioned that Metcalf was at over three in this game, which is tremendous. Well, Pickens was over five. He was at 5.04. Every time he ran a route, Steelers you know, pricked up five yards of offense, give or take. Mason Rudolph, uh, we'll get back to him in a second, actually. Got him here at the end. Uh, Some dudes that were better than I thought. Certainly Rudolph, although I thought he was quite good to begin with. So, it was a high bar. Broderick Jones. Siamalu. Sullivan, who I've been really hard on. Really good job. You know, what he did with Jackson Smith and Jigba, I did not see coming. Adams, who we mentioned, didn't play a ton, but did really well. And Wallace. And Wallace is another guy I've been really hard on, but I thought he had a good game. Worse than I thought. Mason Cole, we talked about the snaps, but I just don't think he's a starting center. Um, Allen Robinson did very little. I mean, he, his blocking was okay, but he was not separating, not impressive. Killebrew was out there more than you'd like. We'll get to that in a minute here, um, but didn't hold his own. And Mark Robinson, to me, might not be an NFL player. So there's that. Offensive snaps. They played 72 snaps. A couple interesting things here. Pickens only played 56, but still paced the wide receivers. Allen Robinson was second again in wide receiver snaps. That's two weeks in a row. He had 48, Deontay had 42. Now, some of that's because, well, all of it's because just blocking. Like, they're playing 12 personnel, 13 personnel with Robinson out there because they just want to hammer teams. But people are going to catch up to that pretty soon, too. Um, Austin played 14, Boykin played six to stress how much their tight ends played in 12 and 13. Fryermuth played 46 snaps. Washington played 45, Hayward 22, and even Williams was out there for four, which is usual. Warren out snapped Harris by one, 39 to 38. All the, uh, hurry up stuff, two minute stuff. That's all clearly Warren's work. 
Um, defensive snaps. They only played 49. As I just said, they played 72 on offense, only 49 on defense. You know that tickles me. Cam played 41 of them, which is usually a higher percentage than you like, but I also don't think these guys ever got tired because they weren't out there that long. Ogan Joby played 39, Benton 22, Adams 14, Watt 4, Loudermilk 3. Fine. Watt and Highsmith played 44 and 43. Golden only played nine. Herbig only played two. But I thought they were highly effective snaps, especially the two that Herbig threw out there. But again, you just didn't need to te- test your depth all that much. Jack was out there for every snap. I think he's been a success, all things considered. Walker for only 16. Robinson for 16. Fine. Yeah. You know. Peterson also didn't miss a snap at safety. Rowe played 42. Killebrew, 19. Riley, seven. Porter was out there for 47. Wallace for 44. Sullivan for 22. And Pierre for two. Um, Last thing here. I just put this out on Twitter. Mason Rudolph is now seven, four, and one as the starter for the Steelers. That probably doesn't blow you away, but hey, I mean, that's pretty good. But how about this? And here's the tweet that I sent verbatim. Over the past two weeks with Rudolph as the starter, well, actually, this isn't from Twitter, but I concede, of course, this is a very, very small sample size. It's two games, and they're against two bad defenses. Uh, Those are facts. Um, I 100% see that. But these two weeks that he's been the starter, the Ravens have the best offense in the league over the last two weeks in EPA per play. Okay. Okay. Packers are second. Steelers are third. Steelers are third best offense in the league over the last two weeks. And over those two weeks, the Steelers are third in EPA per dropback and second in the league in rushing EPA. Pretty good. I mean, it it sure beats some of the conversations we've had of, boy, if they could just get to average, you know, I mean, they're in the top few, again, against bad defenses. But it's what you want. All right, everyone, take care. Over and out.